really interesting to me what your curator chose and what he left out because it's not all just the new work. Yeah, I was surprised. When he first saw the show that I have for Horace Richter, the one that was down uh -huh. uh, in the gallery here, he saw that show, all my recent work, the ones that were at the Benson Gallery, and he said, oh, oh, this is the show, this is wonderful. So I said, well, I said, let me take you upstairs. And that's when I brought him up here, opened the door, put the lights on, and he said, oh, my goodness. And then I started, you know, pulling out the old stuff. This was, this is an example of a night and a day, which I kind of, I, I do series like that. Right, it's also, one on the, top of the other. it's also the village. Yeah, it's the village. Yeah. And this there's is, one here like that. And this is essentially the same, it's the same painting, but it's done, you know, uh, at night. And it's oh, done, I see. So the same painting. But night and day is only one way you can consider seen from different angles. You do something like that in, in work here from the late 90s. And I do that a lot. I, I do it with faces now. I, I mean, I just like, I like those two worlds. I like to show how things change. Because I love, you know, working with, with new palettes. This one's going to be green. This is going to be light green. Uh, it's going to have a, um, a this color green mixed up with it. No, that's actually good. This going to have a lot of a Kelly green mixed in with that. And this is my usual silver that has black like over there. Yeah, and in a way, this was this was a little change. And again, you know, it was a, I, I discovered some new earrings. And, but it's almost all kind of writing because I don't really know what I'm doing. My hand just kind of goes to it. Well, what's wonderful about these is not only can you can you trace the development of your work, but you really see the beginnings of some of the paintings that are going to be in the show. As yeah, well. actually, these, these, this, this, this is a painting, and uh, uh, that was I, I had done that for the creature show, and uh, this is another. This is the beginning of um, a horse, I think. And uh, oh, this is the one. This is the one I, I, I like to talk about because she's um, the one with the. Uh, she, she's turning her back. And there's, she, she's in a lot of paintings, and uh, she's in a painting that's in the show. She's in the Search for the Diner Dog. And that's actually, it. she, that's why the title, that's why the title came. She is searching for the Diner Dog. This is actually the first, the prototype for the Search for the Diner Dog, which is in the Marymount show. And this was, but, but la later I put uh, those spikes on his back. It's just a decoration. And later on, she's wearing roller skates. Right, right. later on, she's wearing roller skates. Uh, the, my mummies began to the roll blades, and I don't know if you noticed it yesterday in the brand new painting, which yeah, you said is a breakthrough, is a new series. So these, these big-headed people, mm -hmm. uh, the big-headed people. I had to at the, the at the last moment. I was looking for different kinds of shoes or boots, and I said, "Oh, come on, I don't know. She's gonna wear roll blades." These were definitely the forerunners. This this one here, let me see right there. The forerunners of um, the whole this series of three panels. Yeah, yeah. These were the three. These were the beginnings of the three panels. Even in your drawings, the surface never stops. Well, that's why I, why I, I so it is keep coming back. Thinking. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I think that the fact that you have energy lines, yeah. that even the surface of the painting yeah. is speaking. And I know I, I've, I really am uh, obsessed with this energy lines. And I know in my journal I wrote something about the lines having to do with water, having to do with... Um, what I feel when I'm kayaking, mm. the flow, you know, everything going together, and, and the fact that in my in my energy, uh, the energy is always confined to that to that space, that that little form in the painting, whether it's a nose or a mouth, or, or a skirt or a dress or something, but or a leg or part of a leg. But within that box, there's a lot of energy. It's just, and it's like they're fighting to get out. So when I finish my painting, people say to me, "Well, what what do you what do you texture Why don't you just leave it alone?" But it's not enough. Once I painted it, then I have to do something more than, you know, it's, mm -hmm. like, it's not enough that it's just red. Right. It has to be red with magenta or red with Elizabeth Crimson. But there's something going on within it. And what's going on within my paintings are the, um, is this movement. This movement is sort of like, it's like within a cell. It's like each one of them is a cell. But everything's fighting, it's inside. That's Actually, like you know, your life. Every hour yeah. is like that. Okay. <laughs> I texture my life. Absolutely. If I texture my mom. If it's not, your your hands are never still, yeah. and your hours are never idle. You're on the water. You're rowing. You're windsurfing. Yeah. There's some vibration going on. There's some energy line yeah. in every hour. The wheels are moving. The wheels are moving. Absolutely. Amazing. The arms are moving. Yeah, it's true. We talked about it watching you cook in your kitchen here. 
that your hands never stop. No, my hands are It'd be interesting to film you sleeping to see if your hands are twitching or your eyes are moving. I don't know, but I have I have I have dream a lot. I mean I have, I have very active dreams. I wake up and I have terrific <laughs> dreams. I, I put in my time at night. I don't think I ever wake up without a dream. This is my, my dream world. This is where I live. I, I want I really want the world to be this bright. I was born at high noon. Mother, when was I born? You were born at high noon as the bells of St. Stanislaus chimed. I sent John to call Grandma. He cried. Grandma said you were the strongest and would become a lady wrestler. That night, I waxed the kitchen floor. I remember being in a carriage. I remember being in a subway and saying, and I'm going like this with my finger. And my mother said, Dad, stop that, stop that, stop that, stop that. You're drawing in the air. And I, I, I didn't know what she meant because I could see it. I mean, it, for me, the 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 entire sky uh, was my was my canvas, you know, with the, with the roof of the uh, of, of the um, of the subway car. So finally, I realized, you know, I could get these pens and I could do these little paintings. I could go um, on the Hamptons, and I started working on the bus. I started working on the train on Long Island Railroad. And then there was boring things. You go to the doctor, like waiting for a mammogram, or waiting for an X-ray, one you know, of those routine checkups. So I did with my inks and my little pad and I'm, everybody else is like squirming and sitting and waiting and watching because the doctor's always like and they're reading these stupid magazines and I'm walking and I found it calms me down and I just love it and I, there, there's no time I mean this is about as small as I get you know this is, this mm -hmm. is small and these are nice little books well you know what I'd like to do make a panel of this repeating over and over again you mean the, the ones I have sketches the sketches oh great really could be. I don't mind. I don't know. Somebody longer. wants to make my things into scarves. I'm okay, you can make them into tablecloths. Well, the aim is to be see a big divide in line between, dividing line between design and art. I don't either. I don't, I, I, at this point in my life, I think, you know, if you want to make underwear, whatever you want to do, you know, toilet paper. If you see my well, cases, I'm I'm toilet, no, I, like, I like the toilet paper. I like each little, each little, um, you know, little square. What is it called? What are those little, what are those things called? I think they're called each little square. Each little square is another face. <laughs> So I was surprised by what I call stance. Stance is kind of the way you stand. Or you, something like you say, demeanor, but I think it's more powerful. Stance is sort of the, the flavor, the scent, the smell that you get from somebody. You know, like, like it's the edge they have, it's their accent, it's, it's the way they stand in the world. And uh, and so these new, new ones, these, these, these big headed ones that we'll see a little later in the studio, uh, they definitely have a different stance. I mean, they, they, they're taking over. That's another thing. They've taken over the painting. Well, uh, by the way, the new painting, the one that you saw at my studio last week, mm -hmm. uh, of, of the, the, the people with the huge heads. Yeah. I have, this is the first time I have four pounds. Not oh, three. really? Yeah. So we'll see how, we'll see how that works out. That's a four pound. Well, it's like the Japanese. Don't screen. let life imitate art. I know you've had triplets. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've gone on to four now. Don't do this. <laughs> so, okay. Well, thanks a lot for coming. My this pleasure. Great. As always. And I'll see you soon. Bye. Take care. There's not enough time in the day. And there's not enough years. And if I'm lucky, I'll live to be my mother's age. If I'm lucky.